thankful for our kids today. Come on, can you put your hands together with Stay? Let's just... Now, this is one of those things that we've done this song many times, but it's a little different feel. So however you need to worship today, if you need to just slide back and forth, whatever that feels like and looks like going in. Are you ready to worship the Lord today? And are you glad to be here this morning? How many of you all came expecting to hear something specific from God today? Come on, if you've come specifically to hear from Him, let's just raise our hands in this place. And let's just pray together. Father, we thank you for this day and we thank you for what you're doing in this region, in this house. And God, we say that your name is magnified and that you are lifted higher above anything, above any circumstance and any situation today, Father. So we worship you, we magnify you, and we glorify you in this place today. And all God's people said, amen. Come on, if you know this, I want you just to sing along with us. Water you turned into wine Open the eyes of the blind There's no one like you Not like you Come on, sing into the darkness Into the darkness you shine Out of the ashes we rise There's no one like you Not like you Oh, sing our God Our God is greater God is stronger, God you are higher than any other, our God is healer, awesome in power, our God, our God, our God is greater, our God is greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other, our God is healer, awesome in power, our God, our God. God is 
to church. Amen. It's not a dread. It's not a burden. It's actually fun to come into the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. Let's begin to just sing this song together. I know that there's many hearts here today that are expecting God to move in certain situations and certain circumstances. But right now, let's just press into Him specifically to see where He's wanting to take us today in every single move, in every single place of our lives, of what God's doing today. Can we just reverence and honor Him in this place right now?
used to having a pretty big mouth. Uh, I really feel like I'm supposed to read something here. So just so you all understand what the blessing that is. When I was in grade school, I had a whole lot of trouble reading. And uh, uh, Justin, can you come up here with me? Rocky, Rocky Meadows, can you come up here with me, please? Y'all bear with me. I'm shaking like a leaf in the windstorm right now. Believe that. Okay, uh, this is coming out of Ezekiel, and I, I was given this when I was uh, locked up. I've uh, been there a couple times, and uh, I just, when I read this, I think you'll understand where, where it's coming from. This is Ezekiel chapter 36, starting around verse 24. It says, For I will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of, out of all countries and will bring you into your own land. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and ye shall be clean from all your filthiness, and or from all your filthiness, from all your idols will I cleanse you. A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I fill within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you, and cause you to walk in my statutes, and ye shall keep my judgments. Do them. And ye shall dwell in the land that I gave you, gave to you to your fathers, and ye shall be my people, and I will be your God. I will also save you from all your uncleanness. And I will call you, and I will call for the corn, and will increase it, and lay no famine upon you. And I will multiply the fruit of the tree and the increase of the field, that ye shall receive no more reproach of famine among the people. Then shall you remember your own evil ways and your your doings that were not good, and you shall loathe yourselves in, in your own sight for your iniquities and for your abominations. But not for your sakes do I this, saith the Lord God. Not for your sakes do I this, saith the Lord God. Be it known unto you, be ashamed and confounded for your own ways, O house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord, in the day that I will have cleansed you from all your iniquities, I will also cause you to dwell in the cities, and the waste shall be builded. And the desolate land shall be tilled, whereas it lay desolate in the sight of all that pass by. And they shall say, This land that was desolate is become like the Garden of Eden. And the waste and desolate and ruined cities are become fenced and are inhabited. Then the heathen that are left round about, you shall know that I, the Lord, build the ruined places and plant that was desolate. I, the Lord, have spoken it, and I will do it. Thus saith the Lord, I will yet for this be inquired by the house of Israel to do it for them. I will increase them and make them like a flock, as the holy flock, as the flock of Jerusalem in her solemn feast. So shall the waste cities be filled with flocks of men, and they shall know that I am the Lord. us sharp. There are situations that we're facing here today that can get foggy. Yeah. And how many know that living, living moral can make you feel like you're still trying to run uphill on a slippery slope? Yeah? I'm just trying to do it right. I'm just trying to be moral. And I'm so thankful to our brother here that just went, here's the word. Here's the word. The word is living and powerful. It's active. Once the word is presented, it's able to divide through situations. It's able to divide through even the confusions in our own heart over situations. It's able to bring certainty to a foggy situation. Anybody needing that this morning? Come on, let's stretch our hands to the Lord right now. We need wisdom. We don't need good ideas and we don't need a pep talk. We need the word of God that is able to be sharp. 
and powerful that is able to divide through the things that have become foggy in our lives. Father, in the name of Jesus, we release peace that is beyond understanding. And Lord, we release wisdom, wisdom that is able, God, to cut through situations that have kind of been revolving through patterns. We have businesses that are struggling, that are just going through patterns over and over again. They're saying this, Lord, we've been here before. We have cycles of, of, of sin and, and addiction that, that if we're going through patterns and we got, we're saying to ourselves, Lord, we've been here before. But Lord, we know that your spirit is able to take us to places that we have not been before. We know that your direction is able to take us into places and give us wisdom that we have not been exposed to before. So draw us into that place, Lord, that we might drink deeply and walk in the fullness of your purpose and plan. Give strategies in business and in life this morning. Give strategies in the walk with the Lord. Give strategies that cut us through good ideas and try harder next time. We say a new life and a new breath in the body that hits the target in Jesus' name. That hits the target of our lives and hits the target of our culture. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Can you just sing this with me out today? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Jesus reigns in this place Showers of mercy and grace Falling on every face Falling on every face There is to 
over our emotions, over our, our ideas. Jesus, you reign. Jesus, you reign. Oh, Jesus, you reign over all. Come on, sing it one more time. Jesus, Jesus, you reign. Jesus, you reign. Jesus, you reign over all. circumstance, any issue, any identity is not bigger than Jesus. He's revealing the greatness of him in this moment. And he wants you to take those things that you have made bigger than him and allow those things to bow at his feet. Because he's King Jesus. He wants you to lay those things that have become bigger than him at his feet. So that he can be exalted, that he can be lifted high, and so that you can be healed, you can be set free, you can be released from the very things that have held you back from his goodness, from the very things that have held you back from his love. You think those things are helping you, but they're really not. You think those things are fulfilling you, but they're really not. They're holding back the very thing, the very person of Jesus wants to break in. So this morning as we sing this again, as we sing Jesus you reign, I want you to allow him to reign over the very things that have taken the place that he should be in. Come on, sing King Jesus reigns. King Jesus reigns. King Jesus reigns. King Jesus reigns over all. Come on, lift it up. King Jesus reigns. King Jesus reigns. King Jesus reigns over all. One more time. King Jesus reigns. King Jesus reigns. King Jesus reigns over just weaving in and out, in and out, all through the congregation, and he's depositing his light in you. So just receive it. Just open up your heart. Forget, like they said, forget about everything of the past 
everything that is hindering you, just stop and focus on him and say, I receive. It's that simple. Just receive what he's given you this morning. very capable. Yeah. He's capable of doing what we can do. And he desires to do it as well. Yes. Linda, you and Jim, come on back up front, if you don't mind. You and Jim, come on up here. Pastor Ronnie, I want you to grab that microphone, if you don't mind. Jim and Linda are expanding. You all can be seated. They're expanding their ministry. Yeah. They're expanding their ministry. I feel like I'm not on up here. Okay. Um, Linda's been in ministry a long time. And Jim has been with her through the years of ministry as well. And uh, Jim, huh? He pushes. He pushes. And it's exciting when the Lord expands people's Territories, just like this morning with you, the Lord expanding you, and um, it's just not good to be comfortable anymore. You know, so there's a restlessness that's happening in the body of Christ, and it's it's the Lord's doing. I mean, you're you don't have to sit around and try to figure out how to be restless. It's just already happening. If you uh, if you're in tune with what God is doing, He's causing you to be restless, and what used to take forever to you know, to expand, it's happening quickly now. So the Lord laid it upon Linda and Jim's heart to expand their ministry, which obviously is here in Huntington, uh, to, um, I guess would be Middletown. Is that what it's called up there? Middletown, Dayton area? What is it? Monroe? Monroe. It's up in Ohio. And they're, uh, it's strange because used to you would relocate. What would happen, people would leave an area and, re, and set up new roots in another city. But what's happening, what the Lord is doing, is he's not let, allowing roots to be pulled up in one city to go to another city and plant roots. He's just allowing you to plant roots in another city and you continue the roots that you have somewhere else. You don't, it's not, you're not cutting off and severing relationships to whole, start a whole new set of relationships. You just expand your, your, your relationship base, right? So the Lord is calling them to Middletown, to expand their ministry up there. And we're going to pray. Pastor Ronnie's going to pray over them. And we're going to send them forth. But it's going to be a different kind of sending. It's not sending them and hope one day they'll come back. They're really not leaving. Does that make sense? They're going, but they're going and coming back. Do you remember when the, the dove left the ark? And it went out looking for a dry place. It kept coming back. You remember that? Well, the Spirit of God moves across the entire region. He's, he's moving them to that area. They're actually buying property. They already bought property up there, but they still have property here. It's pretty good. I'm glad the Lord is not into either or. He's into also an and. Right? So just because you start a new thing doesn't mean you abandon your old. Okay? So Pastor Ronnie, if you would, I want you to lay hands on them and pray over them. And we're going to agree, and I just keep hearing the word accelerate. You're going to accelerate up there and culminate. Everything that's gone through the years is going to culminate for now. I believe that. I believe that. Before you started speaking, I, I saw the same thing of, of just a uh, fence kind of busting open and kind of expanding its borders. It's, cra it's crazy that that's what he's doing. Father, we thank you so much for what you have locked up inside of this family. 
The things that are locked up in within are the keys to so many other realms, like so many uh, hearts, so many uh, uh, just realms of your glory that need to be opened up in the earth. We do send them forth, Lord God, to expand what you have done in them. They're carrying God. And you've given them a place to deposit. They are carrying God. And you've given them a place to happen. I thank you, Father, that you have prepared the way ahead. And that nothing is happening by petition or hope. But, Lord, you have set the path in front. And you, Lord, will be the one that unlocks the doors and that assembles the people, Lord, that makes a soft place to land for the revelation that they carry together. I see, Father, acceleration in this season of their life. So much preparation has been happening to now, not that they've been on the bench, but Lord, that uh, it's only a preparation stage compared to where you're sending them and where you're sending them quick. Thank you, Lord, for expanding their voice, for magnifying and amplifying it, Lord, that your name might get much glory in the next place. And Lord, that that voice would also still be loud where they're at, that they would have property there and here, spiritually and physically in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 That was awesome. How's everybody? Y'all look good, as always. I appreciate this morning how how the the direction of the service was based upon God's word. You know? Yeah. You can't go wrong with that. But sometimes that's all you need. And, and it's really funny because this morning I had, I had one scripture for you. In, in Ecclesiastes, don't hear much from Ecclesiastes, but Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 1 says, Cast your bread upon the waters, for thou shalt find it after many days. That in one, in one verse, God has capsulized how he, the basic principle for supplying the body of Christ and for how the body of Christ is to, to supply the world. I'll make that clear. I felt like I stumbled a little bit, but that's how God has provided for the body of Christ and for the body of Christ to provide for the world. It's a perpetual motion. Start casting your bread upon the waters. Before long, it will start coming back in on every way. Increased, as he said in his cover. Sometimes if you're waiting on your ship to come in, you stop and realize you've never sent it out. So that's the um, book of Ecclesiastes. I, had, I have to confess, I Wikipedia'd it. wikipedia it yesterday. Did you know it's the most popular and most influential book of the Bible? Even the atheists use it. <laughs> Leave God completely out of it. The wisdom is so profound. They know there's something there. I just thank God that he's given it to us. If you're given this morning, if you're casting your bread upon the water, you can use an offering envelope. Put your information on there. Give my check and put ECH, Expression Church of Huntington, if you're texting. The information might pop up here in a minute. Set it up on time. We thank y'all so much for what you do here. Y'all are an awesome, awesome bunch of folks to have church with. I'm proud to call you a church member. Awesome. So let's pray together over this offering. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you in a simple verse that you tell us to cast our bread upon the water. You'll return it back to us. Increased, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Father, we thank you that you meet us wherever we are. 
wherever our end is, that's where you pick up the strongest. So, Father, we just turn over our finances to, to you. Believe you, Father, for what you're doing in this house. We believe you, God, to be a partner in our finances. Thank you, Father, for every gift given today, every tithe, every offering, Lord. We just pray over it, Lord, for the work of the ministry that we do the best job that we can with it. And everybody in the house said, Amen. Let's just go ahead. I do want to tell you all also that nursery and early childhood children, if you have a baby, uh, you are dismissed. You might be able to take them down there right now. Also, I do want to tell you a couple things that are happening uh, before we also do another part of our um, our service this morning uh, after what Barry has done a phenomenal job the last few weeks talking about giving. And today we have something specifically uh, that targeting to giving that I think, how many of you all actually looked at the Facebook this week and saw the video that Candy did about missions? Go ahead and raise your hands because I want to see who's looking under the Facebook. All right, great. That's the other thing I do want to know is what, during the week, how many of you all have liked the Expression Church Facebook page? There we go. If you have not yet, I want to encourage you to pull out your phone and go to Expression Church of Huntington on Facebook and go ahead and like the page. And uh, I do want to tell you a couple things that are happening. If this is your very first time visiting here with us at Expression Church, we want to know who you are. We will not stalk you much, but we do want to know who you are and who you brought with you. And we want to know who, specifically how you got here and how you heard about Expression Church because we also have got so many things that are going to be happening that Pastor Kevin's going to be talking about. But we want to keep everybody in the loop to know what's going on. So if you're a first-time visitor, in the front of your pew, there are some small cards that you can fill out. And then after service, you can actually, the best way of doing this is just bring them up front and leave them here. We will make sure that we get your information. It's all private and no one else will be able to get a hold of it as well. Um, also, we have Fresh Expression class October the 6th at 6 p.m. What that is, is if you've ever wondered what in the world does this church believe, and if you're hearing things and you're wanting clarity on things and you just want to know how did this thing even start, because you're looking around, we have a very wide array of people, and why in the world would God sit a church right down in the middle of Huntington, West Virginia to become something so amazing? Come to October 6th to Pastor Kevin's office up here. We're going to be doing some different things there. And I want to specifically invite you, if you've never been to one, we go over every, everything from the history of the church all the way to what do we believe as our core values. Also, men's golf outing, October the 10th, and a brunch. It will be at Silo. If you'd like to play golf or if you claim to play golf, see Chad Hutchinson. He's running the sound today and doing a great job. Uh, but see him, and you can get signed up, so you get a team, bring whatever you want to bring as far as people that can make your golf game look even better. Also, we're having a fall festival October the 25th after the service. It's the end of the month. We're going to be celebrating a lot of things, but specifically next Sunday after this 11 o'clock service, we want to invite you, if you'd like to be a part of it at all, whether it's doing something or you just want to be a part of the planning, I just want to encourage you to come on and be a part of that next Sunday. We're going to be planning, but October the 25th, we are going to transform the parking lot. Ronald McDonald House is going to be working with us as well, and we're going to transform the parking lot into a fall festival, and it's going to be so much fun. So I believe that has that is everything. Candy Carmichael, I want you to just come up and share. This is Today we're going to be taking up a special offer, and I want her to tell you some more about that. Thank you, Steph. I'm always amazed at how well Barry takes up an offering and how the scriptures fit. Yeah. And that, that particular verse, cast your bread upon the waters, is one that means a lot to me in missions because if you were to throw something into the water that floated and was not destroyed by water, eventually it would make its way into the ocean. And as you well know, like with what happened with the tsunami in Japan, all this de debris eventually made its way to the United States. It's the same way when you cast your bread, the word, into the waters of God. Because eventually it's going to be coming back around and it will touch every nation on earth. Now, every month we are going to be giving you a short update on missions. And we sponsor Nepal. 
And as you well know, that's a country that was just devastated by an earthquake in April. They had about 10,000 people killed, more than 15,000 were injured on that. The relief work is still going on, and what they found is that they continue to have 4.0 and greater earthquakes, sometimes on a daily basis. So I am continually praying. I go to a website called Global Incident Map, and you can check on that, and it will show live data on earthquakes. And Nepal hasn't been hit for several days, and every day that I get on there, I say, thank you, Lord, that Nepal has not been hit by another earthquake because their infrastructure was so badly damaged that any further quakes continue to damage what is happening there. The relief efforts are ongoing, but one thing that the local pastors and missionaries found were that hearts were open to the gospel because of a tragedy. Amen. And so they went in there. It is normally a Hindu nation on there, and people were still open to the gospel of Jesus Christ because you can't have a relation with three million gods that are in Hindu, but you can have a relationship with Jesus Christ. And that's one of the things that they're finding out. We work with a group called Every Home for Christ, and it is a very economical group because they use local pastors, local ministers who walk many times. And Nepal is a very mountainous country. As you know, it's home to Mount Everest. But they go from village to village using tracks and a verbal witness. Very, very powerful tools. Now, with this, um, I want to show you one thing that I have, and I received this last year. This is a letter that I got that's something very precious to me. This is from Dick Eastman, who is the president of Every Home for Christ. I'm just going to read a few lines here. It says, I wish I could sit across from you and hand this to you in person because it's that special. If you knew where it came from, it would take your breath away. And if you really understood its worth, it would send you to your knees. It's a little tattered because it traveled thousands of miles to get to you, but it's priceless because of what it represents. You see, it's not just a piece of paper. It's a representation of an eternal record of a soul saved because you gave. What this is is that this is a response card. When people get something from Every Home for Christ, they can respond to a Bible study or just to respond to accepting the Lord as Savior. And mine just happens to be from Southeast Asia. So this is something very, very precious. I, I cannot tell you what it's like to see a soul literally changed from darkness to life. The impact of just a small amount. One, do one dollar will reach three families, and generally in one family overseas, you have from three to five people in a home. So $50 reaches 150 families, and it will reach up to 750 people. I'm telling you, it is profoundly effective. I will never forget, and I will close with this, when I was in Africa on my first trip there, we were in Zambia, and we had gone to a little hut that was there. We always check in the villages first to see if we can have permission to get in. We got to the door of this one hut, and this one little lady said, um, I really don't want you to come in because my husband is very sick, and he was not able to control his bodily functions. Well, we said, we're, we're nurses. We, we want to come in. We don't care about that. We just want to pray with him. So we get in this little thatched roof, dirt floor, man is lying there. I took one look at him and I said to the interpreter, you better pray fast because this man is going to die any minute. And the man reached down and began to witness to him and asked him if he would accept Jesus as his savior. The man was too weak to pray the prayer after him, but he nodded. And I will never forget the change on that man's face. The glassy eyes became alive and alert. He looked up and I knew that man had passed from darkness to light. Hmm. This is what it'll do. You may never be able to take a trip like that, but you can sure enough send somebody who can. And I'm telling you, help to answer Jesus' prayer request when he said, send forth laborers into the field so that others can have what you, what you have. Thank you. Hmm. That's good. Isn't God good? Mm -hmm. 
this container we have at the front here, we'll do this the first, what month, one Sunday a month, the third Sunday of each month, we'll receive our change for change. So the container's down here, but so before you all leave, we want you to just reach in your pocket, um, go to your car, get the money out of the ash, change out of the ashtray. Uh, I'm sure you all use it as change also. Uh, and then bring it in here and drop it in here. We've, we've collected a few hundred bucks, I guess, already to send over. The kids did downstairs as well. So we want to we want to send it over there to uh, Paul. Amen. Am I in a bad place? Ken's back there today too. Ken, is your birthday tomorrow? Well, happy birthday, Ken. Anybody else have a birthday this week? Last week? All right. I used to I'm used to saying it. how old, but I learned not to do that in church. That's a dangerous place. Dangerous place. Got some good news this morning. Got some bad news this morning. That's life. Right? Heard some great things are happening and testimonies of people's life that God is doing that only God can do. And I got noticed this morning that a couple people, or one person I know particularly died. Wasn't expecting him to die. OD'd. Right? So the reality of this thing is life. We are not in a position as a church anymore, not just our church, but the body of Christ, to live in a conceptual theology that doesn't relate to everyday living. Make sense? We don't have we don't have the luxury. We just do not have the luxury. We uh, we hurt when people hurt. We celebrate when people celebrate. And when people celebrate because we're hurting, we don't bring them down. We celebrate with them. Because we've experienced a loss doesn't mean people that are experiencing wins have to experience our loss. We can experience their wins. Is that right? The the, the pain and hurt and suffering, which is reality, doesn't have to be the thing that we all share in common. It can become wins that we share in common. There are more people that are winning than there are more people that are losing. You have to know that. There are more people getting saved today in this country and across this world than ever in the history of, of the world. Amen. Hmm. We baptized how many this morning? Two baptisms this morning. That can't ec- the, the, the death of this morning can't eclipse the birthing of these baptisms this morning. Amen. Or you set your... Your, your barometer becomes the lowest common point of loss. Right? Not dismissing and the pain and hurt. It's just that, it, that we have to move forward. Right? If we stop at the point of hurt and darkness and we begin to react to all of that, then it really has a, I read this this morning even, it even has a place in our future. If darkness has that much power over us, then we're in trouble. You all agree? I saw on the news this morning, this week, this bothered me. They asked a bunch of Muslims. I see you say the word Muslims in a Christian church, and everybody goes, whoa, what's this mean? Ask a bunch of Muslim people on the streets of New York City. They said, uh, well, actually, it was actually around New York. They said, um, how many people... Um, would you, how, do you do believe that the Sharia law has, uh, you know, should be the, the, the law of the land above the Constitution even? And it was overwhelming of how many people said that, okay, that the Sharia law should be the highest above the Constitution. But they were asking Muslims. What concerns me a little bit is that the Muslims know the Sharia law more than the Christians know the Bible. Because they ask another group of people, we're talking about the Pope in the United States, and they're asking people all over the, the New York City. They said, what's the Pope's name? Overwhelmingly, the people didn't even know who the Pope was. So Christians are aimlessly living life, while underneath the surface is a groundswell of, of taking over a nation that was founded on Christian principles.
We have an ignorant body of believers in the United Amen. States. Not stupid, ignorant. Our people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, lack of understanding. So we know how to do church well. And I promise you, the media departments across this country can tell you the best technology to purchase. Worship teams know the best songs to play, the best gadgets to purchase. Us pastors know how to push the right buttons to get the right emotional result. I'm just being honest with you today. I've got something burning inside of me that's just about to drive me insane because I see too many people losing. I had 24 requests over the last three days, 24, through Facebook texts or phone calls asking for help. I need direction. I need life direction. I need, I need, I need some, somebody help me. Every one of those 24 have been invited to church before and choose not to come. But yet on Monday, they want me, I'm not beating anybody up, I'm just being honest with you, okay? On Monday, on Monday, you want to monopolize, they want to monopolize our balanced life because of their imbalanced life, because they're emotionally drained and hurting but can't come in here an hour and a half on a Sunday and get in the presence of the Lord and hear the word of God preached. And we don't tickle the ears. We tell the truth. Amen. You can't say one thing about this church. We, we, we bring the word of God. Yeah. We, we have revelation. You don't come and walk away here disappointed that the word wasn't preached. Okay? Because amongst all of us, we can bring it. I promise you. There's enough of us that know the word of the Lord. And then the wor worship is strong and the atmosphere is strong. But it's, it's time, guys that we've got to mature and the leaders of the body of Christ across this nation yeah. are going to have to force the maturity. Oh, wow. yeah. We're going to have to force it. And, and, and I'm feeling pricked in my heart that we're going to have to do, be, be a part of that big transition. It, it's hard to look at across from somebody that's hurting and in pain and, and, and falling apart at the seams. And you're looking at them and, and, and after a while, you can only say so much to help them. You, you know what I mean? And, and, and you, you can't be disrespectful in life and expect people to be there for you when you've kicked on them, kicked them in the face when they're trying to help you. Do you know what I'm talking about? Amen. And then you expect, and then you get mad and become the victim, and you're not really the victim. So the church has become this whole world over here. Listen, absence of the power of God, I just have some really good words to tell you. But I have to have the power of God working in my life to be able to make a change in yours. Right? It has to be. It, it, it just has to happen. But after a while, it's time to just grow up. I told my daughter, she's, you know, she's in college now. My middle daughter, she's in college. She said, man, I'm, I'm a marshal. I, don't, I, I can't take off work three hours and go sit at Marshall to help her register for classes if it's her, if it's her third year. I did it too. Third one's on you. I can go to court for you the first two times. The third time, don't call me on the phone. And they get mad at me when I don't go call and use my influence with the judges and the court system to get you out of your jam when you won't get yourself out of your jam. Amen. Amen. Come on. Come on. Am I all right? Yeah. Is that okay? <laughs> Tickling your ears are causing people to OD. Yeah. Telling you the truth is going to bring you up out of your mess. Yeah. And I'm just... And that's that side of the room. I'm going to make everybody mad today. All right? I'm going to make everybody angry. Okay? Because the bottom line is, you, you, you've got to, you, we got to grow up as a church. We don't need preachers preaching hard messages and everybody amen in them like we're in agreement while the world still goes to hell in a handbasket. We've got to grow up. We can have four services a Sunday and gather all kinds of people here and do wonderful things and not change a city. If we don't get it, we got to get it. We got to create a wineskin that's going to hold the wine that God's pouring out in the earth these days. It's the new wineskin that's holding the earth, holding the wine. 
And what's happening is God is pouring out his spirit in the earth, and they're, we're still trying to do church like we did it 20 years ago, hoping it's going to be a new way. But it's not a new way. It's the old way being looked at a different package. We got to get it. It's, it's time to go. God is relocating people, moving them to Middletown, uh, Middletown, Ohio, or Monroe, Ohio, Australia, bringing them across the country, coming all over the world, bringing them to a place, changing directions. Why? Because the Lord is, the wind is blowing. He's doing something. We, 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 we really got to get past ourselves here to get onto this next thing that the Lord is doing. It's his salvation. It's his kingdom. And he's moving it across the earth. And sometimes we're in the way. We become so seeker sensitive. I gotta be just say it just right to get you to come. And if I offend you, you're not gonna come. And I gotta I gotta make sure you're okay. And I, no 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 no. You got to be okay. Yeah. If nobody tells you you're okay, you got to know for yourself. We got to. It's time, guys. And I'm the guy that goes a distance for everybody. If you fall on your face, I promise you, I'm going to be there to pick you up. But I will kick you in the butt the whole time I'm picking you up. Because I'm not going to waller with you in that thing. But I'll pick you up and I will drag you. I will help you. And I won't abandon you. And I'll be there with that. When people are spitting in your face, I'm going to be right there to catch some of the spit. But I promise you, I'm going to grab you by the ear and tell you it's time to get up off yourself. And let's do this thing. We got to go. I'm not sending out solicitation pieces for church services. Get people to come to church. Just give me a handful. Give me a group that's serious. That's ready to go to the jails. That's ready to go to the prisons. That's ready to go down to 16th Street or 20th Street or Artisan Avenue. We're ready to go down the street in the ball for. Go to the, um, give me those people. Go, go down to the court. Give me those people. That's who I'm looking for. Come on, they'll join in. And not just to go down and tell everybody that the world is wrong. They already know they're wrong. Right. Somebody got to tell us we're not just exactly right. <laughs> Come on, you got something you want to add to that? <laughs> I'm going to John chapter 2 here in just a minute. had us praying for the people that are um, in recovery and also people that are out there on the streets that are on drugs. And what he showed me towards the end on Friday night was I saw um, a bunch of people sitting over here and they were all just jumping up, like popping up like popcorn, uh, just getting awesome testimonies. And I mean, it was happening so much that there was like dancing going on over here of the goodness of God, that people are giving testimonies about that. And then this morning, um, he showed me that he is um, raising you guys up. No matter what you feel like you're going through or the struggle that you're, you know, challenges that you're facing as you're coming through recovery. Well, um, I saw him lifting you up to the fullness. I mean, I saw you small, then I saw you huge. Like, to the fullness of um, your... Uh, your stature in God. And then not only that, but then you became uh, an army of warriors out there bringing other people that are going through the same stuff that you've been through, pulling them out. That's what I saw. That's good. Can I take that a step further? You aren't that special. <laughs> she, talked, she, she addressed the recovery community. Can I just... If you're part of the recovery community, just raise your hand. All right. The rest of you all, you're part of it too. You just don't know it. It's just not just drugs and alcohol. It's just self. Okay? We're all part of the recovery community. But I, I, I tell you what, I, I, this might be some of your old la first and last sign of service today, but I just, you just got to work with me on this, okay? Because I'm feeling something in my heart bad. It's burning. You're just not that special that you get, you, you, you get the whole attention that the world revolves around the recovery community. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah. You're better than that. Don't minimize yourself yeah. to lower your value that you're a part of a, a, a less than satisfactory group in society because people look down on you. That's not who you are. Amen. That's not who you are. And, 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 and church, quit looking down on them. Amen. Quit looking at them like they're some spectacle of society. They're you, Grace. They're, they're, you're them except the grace of God has got you from it. Listen, alcohol, 
or a lot of pie and donuts, it's still addiction. It satisfies self. Okay? We have a guy in the church. Listen to me. This is going to be some, we're just going to do some home, home stuff here today. There's a guy in the church that has a business in the community. His business has several employees. He couldn't. He had a big, big, big job downtown. Big job. And they came in. They came in. This very high, wealthy, influential guy in the city that's a professional came in. And he said, uh, I don't really want them working in my property. Because he hires a few people that are from the recovery community. And he said, uh, I don't want to work in here. And the guy says, what are you talking about working here? He said, I mean, they're, they're hardworking people. And the Lord's blessed them. They're changed. They're transformed. Yeah. And uh, he said, well, I, I just can't have them working on my property. Because they go to that halfway house church. <laughs> I'm just going to be honest with you. I tell you. They go to the halfway house church. We're all the way house church. <laughs> We're not halfway in anything we do, if you all know that. Okay? All right. But it, but it, but it, but it sheds some light on some stuff. And, and guys, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm feeling this so deep in my heart right now. I'm trying to guard even what I'm saying because I feel it. Is that we've got to quit pulling the recovery community separated from the regular community. Yeah, that's right. Because everybody is going through stuff. I don't care who you are. And, and, and sometimes pious, egotistical Christians that, that, that are friends of mine... And sometimes I can become one. Look at people and say, oh, they're just less than satisfactory because they're, they're in the drug community or they're in the addiction, or the addiction recovery community. Man, I'm, I'm so tired of all of that. Yeah. We've got to come past all of that. Yeah. Okay? So, so we, we can't tailor what we do for the community. I do not prepare messages for the addiction and recovery community. I don't. That's not in my heart. I prepare a message for me, and I share it with whoever comes on Sunday. I, that's for me. And you all just get a piece of what I'm eating on during the week. That's how that works. But I, I'm just, I'm tired of the whole separation of this mess. And, 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 and yes, we all got issues. But man, we got to get people mobilized. You got to learn. Whether you've been in recovery for three or four years, or you've been in the church for 30, I tell you, You've got to grow up. Amen. We've got to mature. If we don't mature, the only thing we have to look forward to is one day Jesus has to come back to get us. I'm looking forward to that. But if he doesn't come in our lifetime, we're in trouble. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? Jesus was at a wedding. The king of Galilee in John chapter 2. You don't have to turn it. I'm just going to tell the story. John chapter 2. The Bible says that Mary was at the wedding, and there was a governor of the feast, the ruler of the feast was all there. It was a big party. Jesus w was called with the disciples. I, all my life, I thought, well, they would just have been invited to with Mary. No, no, no. It says Mary was there, and they were called. Mary was already at the wedding, and then she called for them. They come to this wedding, and they're gathered together, and they're all sitting there. It's a big festive party. But something was about ready to happen. That had never happened before. Every time they had heard about Jesus, they thought about Jesus, he walked amongst the disciples, he had never performed a miracle. There had never been an encounter in the public with what was about ready to happen with the man of the Lord, with the man of God, Jesus. So he's sitting at this wedding, and they, you know the story very well. It says, Mary says, Jesus, they're, they're, they're out of wine. And Jesus says, woman, my, my, my hour has not yet come. This is not my hour. This isn't my time. And Jesus says that to his mother. It's not my time. No, no. It's still coming. I'm so frustrated. The next time I hear a message that says Jesus is about ready to. Jesus is going to. There's something coming. If we say that in the future always and never know who he is today... We are forfeiting what he did on that cross. He, it's G, he is, he's the one. He's the Savior. He's the Lord. He's the King. He is, was, is, and is to come. If we only know him at what, what he was, and we only know what he will be, 
and never know who he is, we're missing the life and that life more abundantly that he came to give for us. But, but, but Mary knew something that the church, because Mary represents us as the church. She's sitting at this party, and Jesus looks at her and says, it's not my time. Jesus says, let me delay this. This will happen one day, but it's not going to happen today. Mary looks at him, looks right at the, the servants, and the word servants means ministers. She looked right at the ministers, and she said, whatever he tells you to do, do it. As if she didn't hear what he just said. Sometimes you get a delay or denial. It looks like denial, and it's a delay. And the Lord is saying, I need you just to place a demand on the word. Jesus is the word. The woman is the church. The church looked at the servants, the, ch the ministry, and he, she looked at him and said, whatever the word says, not what the bylaws of the church said. Not, not what denominations said. Yeah. Not what the, the, the people of society said. What the word says. Yes. But if we don't know what the word says, we never know how to hear that word. We'll never know what to do to activate and accelerate the seasons of God in our life. Right. <laughs> if they never knew how to hear that voice, they'd still be waiting on that water to become wine. Or they'd had to go to somebody else and say, what'd he say? What's he saying? To, tell me what he's saying. You don't have the luxury. We don't have the luxury today's times. Man, this place, the world's falling apart. You got Muslims tell, in the country telling us that Sharia law ought to be overriding the Constitution. While we as a passive group of Christians coming to church every week happen to be, be spoon-fed or somebody else tell me what God is saying, while in the middle we're imploding. I'm not against Muslims. I'm just pro-Christianity. Amen. Right? Yeah. And I know who Jesus is. And there's got to be some righteous indignation that's starting to, some holy irritation that has to start rising up in some people. Yeah. That says something's just not right here. And I'm not mad at anybody but the devil. Yeah. All right? I'm not. I'm not angry with everybody. I'm not mad at the church. I love you people. I'll give you my life for you. But I'm telling you, you're not taking my life from me. I'll give it to you. Yeah. Don't steal it. I'll give it. Oh, that went over real well right there. I can feel it. <laughs> that clock, I feel like that clock stopped about 10 minutes ago. <laughs> but the reason I'm telling you this is that Mary, the church, accelerated Jesus' moment by placing a demand on what the word said. Yeah, right. Now listen to this. Jesus then responds, the word responds to the church. When the church said, whatever he says to do, whatever the word says to do, do it. And Mary said, and she talked to the servants, which means in Greek, pastors, ministers, workers, lay people, everybody involved. It's us, right? It's whatever the word says, do it, do it. So, Jesus then responds to the activation of the church. And he says, get those six water pots of stone. There were six water pots of stone. Six meaning the number of man. Brings those six pots of stone over, which means man. And he says, take the water and fill those six pots of stone up to the brim. So you fill up man, all man can be filled up. When man gets filled up, I want you to take those pots of stone and I want you to pour out that water into these vessels that I have here. Here's what the Bible says. The servants, ministers, pastors, lay people, picks up these water pots of stone. They pour the water in it. As they were, they were emptying out of pots of stone into the vessels, the Bible says that the water became wine. But nobody in the entire community of that place knew the water was wine, except the servants knew first. Why is it that we are one step behind as the servants, as the church, as the lay people, as the ministry, as the, why is it that we're one step behind? What is God doing? Not what is God going to do. What is he doing? 
why can't we discern that the water is now wine rather than somebody have to tell us the water is wine? On one hand, six months ago, you got people prophesying doom and gloom across this country. Some of those dates have come and gone, and now they're revising their conditions. <laughs> right? Now, I still say we got some hard times coming. Amen. But just like we had a death this morning, somebody got promoted. Yes. So in the midst of all the darkness, there is light rising in the middle. Amen. You have to see which side of the fence you're going to be on. And what determines what side of the fence you're going to be on is how you hear the word of God. Not how somebody tells you what the word says. We got too much counseling going, and I'm a counselor. We got too much counseling going on, and not somebody coming up and saying, that confirms what God's already spoke to me. If you have the spirit of God living inside of you, you should be able to hear the voice of God. Is that okay? You, you have to. You've got to be able to learn to hear this voice yourself. A child, an infant can hear the mother's voice. You have the instinct that God has placed on the inside of you to hear his voice. The challenges we have is we don't have the confidence of what we just heard was God's voice. So we seek people to confirm or tell us what God is saying. And because people don't know what you heard, they only tell you what they heard. So then you begin to battle and become double-minded in your ways. And you're unstable in everything that you do. Why? Because you're not sure and confident the voice of God is in the inside of you. There's got to be a confidence like Mary that said, I heard what you said. It's not your time. But I'm placing a demand on the word of God to heal, to set free, to change, to transform. Are you guys hearing what I'm telling you? It transcends time. And accelerates moments. I'm almost ready to receive another offering. That's how good this is. The only people that knew that water was wine was the servants only. Right? The servants heard it first. I'm here to tell you today. I'm going to unlock something. I'm going... I'm going to open your deaf ears of your spirit that you hear the voice of God and I'm going to mute the voice of the enemy that you can't hear him we're constantly battling the devil and we're kind of trying to open up somebody's ears to hear because he's got them deaf we're going to reverse that thing today we're going to, we're going to mute him and unlock the ears to only hear the voice of God is that okay? The governor looks at them and says this. Something's happening here. I, I can recognize this. Why in the world would he do it this way? Most people serve the good stuff first. And then when the good stuff gets everybody kind of going in the right direction, they'll slip in the old stuff. But this guy saved the good stuff for last. Every man in the beginning sets out the good wine, and when the guests have well drunk, then the inferior, you have kept the good wine until now. I'm here to tell you, the best times are not behind you. Your best times are now. That will continue on to the future. If you, if you quit getting caught up in your messes, your shame, your guilt, your slip-ups, your mess-ups, your, 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 your idiosyncrasy to what people think of you and trying to people please, if you get quit, quit about everybody else yeah. and focus on right here, That's right. that you can hear his voice clearly and quit worrying about the opinions of people, quit trying to get your emotional needs met by somebody else, quit medicating on your people around you to help soothe something on the inside that only he can fulfill. If you quit that, and you'll focus on what he's telling you to do. You'll hear his voice, and I promise you, things will begin to change in your life. Are you ready for it? Well, here's, it's a good message. But here's the thing. What are we going to do practically 
to put some things in motion in your life. Because it's one thing to, I mean, I played ball. I know what a locker room talk looks, sounds like. I mean, our coach used to talk us into a real frenzy. We'd be so pumped up, banging helmets to head to head and hitting shoulder pads and everything else. And then go back out and about first half, we'd get our heads beat in because we didn't have a real good game plan. And you come back in at halftime and the coach starts doing that same thing again, you're not buying it. You know what I'm talking about? You've been, I've been there, man. I've been in there. Yeah, we're going to go get them. We're going to take them on. You go out and fight it and then you come back in at halftime and you're down about 28 or 30 points. And the coach says, we can do this. You're going, yeah, we better change something. Because what we did the first half is not working. And if we don't make some adjustments in the second half, we already know where the story ends. I'm not telling anybody anything. You, we have to make some adjustments practically in our lives that's going to bring a different outcome. Or we can look back and see where we've been and you'll know where you're going. Right? That means sometimes you've got to cut off some relationships practically that have brought you to that place of trouble and to think that that relationship that brought you into the trouble will somehow get you out of the trouble is the wrong voice right Am I, are you okay see see when the rubber meets the road that's when all the change takes place because the woman could have said whatever he tells you to do and he could have been some well let me tell you what i think we should do no, until they actually physically took the water, poured it into the water pots, and poured it out physically, practically, it never would have changed. So unless you engage practically in your life with practical changed decisions, nothing's going to change. He's not going to rapture you out of your situation without you making changes in your situation. It's not going to happen. I'm telling you, if you want to lose 50 pounds, I'm preaching to the choir right here. You better change what you're doing for lunch today. But praying and asking God to let it fall off, it's not going to happen. Or you get really sick and you've got to pray for healing because you've been sick to lose the weight. Come on, that's how we think sometimes. Let's get this thing moving. Are you ready? Let's get this thing changed. Some of you are renting some houses and God's put on your heart to buy. And you've been delayed because there's always reasons why it won't work. I'm just telling you. You're going to wait till the interest rates go up and you're going to pay a higher rate than what you could pay now if you would just pour the water in the pots today. And then you say, but I, I, know, I know what's stacked against you. I know you don't qualify, but I'm not asking you to qualify. I'm asking you to hear the voice of God and then do what the voice says. What does the word say to you? Not what does it say to everybody else. What does it say to you? About four years ago, 2008, the economy just crashed. And I was screaming out. Everybody was going, man, we, this, this place, real estate market's gone to crazy. It's all over the country. The stock market's gone crazy. And I'm screaming out. I'm sending text messages from Dallas, Texas, back here going, buy. You, you don't understand. This, now's the time where it's transitioning. Buy. Now's the time to engage, not pull away. Fear has never, ever brought satisfaction to somebody's life. Only faith can bring satisfaction to your life. Fear, fear will never bring you joy. Only faith will bring you joy. So you can see life through two lenses. Through fear, uncertainty, doubt, unbelief, expecting to fall down on your face and never get back up again. Or I'm going forward. I'm righteous. I've fallen seven times, but guess what? I'm getting back up and keep going. I'm going. I am moving forward. Don't classify me in people's opinions. I'm not a part of the recovery community. I'm a part of the body of Christ. I'm not a part of, I'm not a part of the projects in the, in, in, in down in the hood. I'm a part of the, I just happen to live there and communicate, and that's the route the Lord has used to change my life. Listen, man, I've been there. I know what I'm talking about. I had it all, lost it all. I watched how it all worked. I put my hands all over it. I became my number one fan. 
and in my 20s fell on my face and people started trying to label me. You're that, you're this, you're that. And for the longest time I believed them. Yeah, and then I realized, no, that's the route that God used to bring me into the kingdom. And now that I'm in the kingdom, I thank God for the route, but that's not my destination. Stand to your feet. So I'll tell you what we're doing practically. Starting October 11th on a Sunday morning at 9.45, we're killing our nine o'clock service. You know why we're killing it? I don't want to just duplicate efforts at 11 o'clock to come in and have worship and have great things happening here. Gather another 100 people, 150 people. We come in and we do this. No, no, no. I'm looking for the hungry, the ones that want study. And from 9.45 to 10.30, starting on October 11th, we're going to break open the Bible. We're not going to sing a song. So if you're coming for that moment, come to 11. Okay? We're not receiving an offering. We're coming to open up the Bible. And we're going to get in the middle of that word. And I promise you, if you will engage in what your heart is saying, and I'm not, I'm, this is not an open invitation. This is only an invitation for those that want it. Right? We cannot raise up a church where the Muslims know the Sharia law and the church don't know the difference between the Old Testament and the New Testament. We can't raise up a country, a church in, a, in this country, where they, they, where they know exactly everything they're trying to accomplish. But over here, we can't tell you how many books are in the Bible. And we got kids downstairs, we got young people here that raise, don't even know the hymns that we sang as a kid. Now, that doesn't make it sacrilegious, but what it does mean is we've lost something. I want the kids come up here and tell me about it. Hey, guy. I want them to be able to extract out of the book of, the, of, of John that says, hey, you know what? When I read that book about Mary and Mary said to Jesus, that, she represents the church and he represents the word. Why does it take somebody like us in our 40s to be able to figure that out? They should be raised up and trained up. And I'll tell you something, people. Those of you that don't have relationships with your children and you're not connected to them, you want God to move in those situations? You prepare yourself. He will move mountains to get your kids in a position to hear the voice of God working in your life. You owe it to yourself and you owe it to them. There's got to be a generation of people that are raised up in this earth that know how to discern the voice of God and know what to do with that voice. That's us. And I'll be... I'll be I'm, we're, not, we're just not going to spend a lot of time doing good church and have ignorant people. We're going to do great church, but have great, knowledgeable, spirit-led, spirit-fed people. Are you ready for it? Now, nobody's looking around because everybody's got their heads bowed real quick. All right? Who in here needs to be saved? You need to have your life completely turned around. You're lost you don't even know one day from the next, and you know you need saved. You need saved. Who is it? Just raise your hand. Okay, I see your hands. I see another hand. Who else? Here's another one. I see. I, I heard. There you go. I see it. I see your hands. Good. Now, those who raise your hands, I want you to just do me a favor. I don't want you to just gingerly walk out of here because I saw some of your hands. Some, I see. I played ball with some of you. I saw how you moved down the court. So don't just gingerly tiptoe out of your seat. I want you to get out of your seat as fast as you can. I want you to come down here to the front. I don't care who you are. Just, I want you to come down here as fast as you can. All right. Stacy, I want you to take all these guys for me. Take them here. Just, just come up here real quick. You and Billy, come up here. I want you to take these guys... I don't know what room we have. Do we have a room somewhere? Find a room. Take a room. I want you to, I want you to talk to them. And I want you to, to, them to know you'll never come back to the altar again to have your sins forgiven. You're saved. You hear what I'm saying? They're going to pray with you, okay? All right. This altar is a point of, it's, it's a, it's a point of change. From this point on, it changes everything, okay? Now, that doesn't mean you can't come to the altar and lay your troubles down and get rid of all the stuff. I know that. But... This isn't magic up here. It's not magic. What happens is when the Lord comes in your heart, everything begins to change. You're dead, but now you're alive. 
You're blind, but now you see. You're, you're deaf, but now you can hear. Are you ready? I want to pray for everybody here when I pray for them before they take them out. I want to pray that the voice of God is so clear in your ear that your, the, the deafness of hearing God's voice is removed. And I'm going to mute the enemy's voice to where he can't be so loud and alarming that you hear him more than you hear the voice of God. Are you ready? Lift your hands for me if you don't mind. Father, in Jesus' name, I loose the people's ears to hear the voice of God. I loose it. God, I, I, I say amplify your voice in their ear that they couldn't miss it if they try. And then, Lord, if they start questioning it, I pray, God, that you have their heart pounding outside of their chest as just a sign and a confirmation to know that that's your voice. Lord, let your trumpet blow so loud in their hearts that it'll alarm them. And then I say, God, in Jesus' name, I deafen, I mute the ability for the enemy to speak and be heard into their lives. Thank you, Father, that the water is now wine and the best is now. Father, we're living in the last days. And I say, God, let these days be the greatest days we could ever imagine in our lives. I say it, I declare it, I call it, and I call these young men saved, ready to go to the next place with you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. God bless you all. We'll see you all on Wednesday night.